Hey everybody, and welcome to this week's video, which is all about using SQL to analyze sales trends. Now this may sound like something that's more in the wheelhouse of a spreadsheet like Microsoft Excel or Google Sheets, but with a little help from window functions, you might be surprised at what you can accomplish right in your SQL code editor before you ever push that data into a spreadsheet. So as a data analyst, or really anyone in the business world who works with data, understanding how sales change over time is crucial for helping decision makers make informed decisions. So my goal in this video will be to guide you through the process of writing a SQL query to analyze monthly sales trends for different product categories, leveraging some intermediate to advanced techniques like common table expressions and window functions. Now the data we'll be working with can be found in the AdventureWorks database, which is a commonly used sample database provided by Microsoft for practicing SQL queries. It contains various tables related to a fictional company, including sales data, product information, and customer details. Now in this tutorial, because we're focused on the trends in products sold over time, we'll be focusing on tables pertaining to sales and products. More specifically, our goal is going to be to calculate the total sales for each product category by month and year, and then compare these sales amounts between consecutive months. Now by the end of the tutorial, you'll have a better understanding of how to use SQL window functions to analyze time-based trends in sales data. And as you might imagine, this skill is invaluable for identifying patterns, making predictions, and ultimately helping businesses to strategize and make data-driven decisions. Now the first step in our analysis will be to calculate the total sales for each product category by month and year. And to do this, we'll create a common table expression, also commonly known as a CTE, named monthly sales. This CTE will basically be aggregating sales data from the sales order header, sales order detail, and product tables in this AdventureWorks sample database. Now we could also accomplish this step with a subquery, but I generally find CTEs to be a superior option when it comes to breaking down complex queries into manageable parts and just making our code easier to read and maintain. So as you can see here, to save you from having to suffer through watching me hunt and peck for an hour, I've pre-written some of the less exciting SQL. Specifically, the stuff involving all the joins between the tables that have the fields we need to do our analysis. So very briefly, you can see that the sales order header detail table joins to sales order header, the product table joins to sales order detail, and the product subcategory table joins to the product table. So it's basically this kind of daisy chain connection from one table to the next that ultimately puts together all the tables that have everything we need to accomplish what we're trying to get done. Then, in the select portion of the query, we're pulling in the product category ID, which uniquely identifies each product category, and also extracting both the year and the month from the actual sales order date. So the first modification I want to make to this query is to convert it to an aggregate query, so that we're actually rolling up, or aggregating, our sales totals by product category, year, and month. Now the first step in accomplishing this will be to add a new field to our select list in which we sum up our total sales. So I'll start by typing out that sum function, and what we're going to sum is actually going to be an expression that yields the total sales amount for any given order, so that when we sum that up, we get the total sales amount 
per each of the groups in what will be our aggregate query. So that expression is going to be order quantity from the sales order to tail table times unit price from the same sales order to tail table. And then we'll just alias this as total sales. And of course, because this is an aggregate query, we're going to need to add a group by clause and group by all the fields in our select that we're not aggregating. So I can actually just copy and paste those three fields and then go down a couple lines in my query and add that group by and then simply add those three fields to that group by clause. And also, of course, remove the aliases since we certainly don't need those in the group by. So now I'll run this just to see what we're working with as the basis or foundation of our query. And there we go. It looks like we have a product category and month level rollup of total sales. So the last thing to do with this particular piece of our query will be to convert it to a CTE so we can reference it easily in the next step of the query. So I'll again name that CTE monthly sales. So I'll say with monthly sales as Okay, so with our sales data aggregated by month and year within each product category, and all of that rolled up into a CTE that we can easily reference, we're now ready to calculate the changes in sales between consecutive months, which is what will ultimately give us insight into those sales trends over time. And we'll be using a window function called lag to achieve this. So if you're not familiar, the lag function will allow us to access data from a previous row in the same result set, which in our specific case here, will enable us to compare the current month's sales with the previous month's sales. Here's how all that will work. So first, I'll just create a simple select query that selects all the fields from our CTE. Remember, a CTE is basically just a virtual table. So you can think of the output of the query you see here as just another table in our database that we're able to reference. And like selecting from a table, it's as simple as just referencing the fields in this CTE in a select clause. So I'll just copy the select clause from my CTE and roll down and paste those in but then I can get rid of all the aliases that reference the tables in the join from our CTE because we don't need to worry about any of that here. All that heavy lifting was done for us in the CTE step, so all we need to do is just reference the fields from the end product of the CTE. So I'll get rid of this first alias, and then we obviously no longer need the expressions to calculate these fields since again, they were already calculated for us in the CTE. So I'll get rid of those. And finally, I simply need to say from the name of our CTE, which is monthly sales. So now let's run this just to make sure everything's lining up properly. And the result is exactly what it should be, which is the same as just running the query that defines our CTE. But now where things get interesting is that we can layer in additional expressions in the select query that reference the data produced by the CTE. Namely, in this case, that will be previous month sales, which for any given row of our output will show the total sales for the previous row of our output. That's how we'll be able to do that side by side month over month comparison. So to get that done, I will use that lag window function, and then I'll pass to that our total sales field since we want the previous total sales value per a given row. And then because this is a window function, you know we'll need an over. 
And now we need to think about whether we want the total sales value from the previous month full stop or whether we want the total sales value from the previous month within a given product category. Now, if you recall, our goal is to actually compare current month sales to previous month sales within given product categories. So that means I'll need to partition by product category ID so that for any given row, lag looks back to the previous month within that specific product category. So my next step then is to add a partition by and then partition by product category ID, which again is that unique identifier for product categories. So with that in place, it's time to turn our attention to the order by clause of the over function. This is where we'll actually define what we mean by previous row. Now in our case, previous means previous month. So we'll need to order by year and then month to make sure we're getting the previous month in the same year. So we'll say order by year and month. And finally, I'll alias this whole thing as previous month sales. Now this query isn't going to give us our end product just yet, but it's a solid start. So let's run this just to assess where we're at. And just from a quick scan of the data, it looks like our previous month sales field is working exactly as designed. There's a null in that field for the first month in product category one, which makes sense because there couldn't possibly be a previous month. But then in the second row, we see the same value in previous month sales that we see in the first row for total sales. So that means for any given row, we'll be able to compare the total sales amount for that month and product category ID against the same value for the previous month. Now, just to double check that this is working within product category IDs and not just within the data set as a whole, let's scroll down until we get to product category ID two. And sure enough, it looks like the sequence resets. The very first month for product category ID two has a null value in previous month sales, but then the value in that same field for the second month matches the value for total sales in the first month. Okay, so at this point, I'm confident that what we have so far is working as intended. And the good news is most of the heavy lifting is done. Now we're just gonna take the building blocks we've put in place and combine them to add a final layer of polish to our analysis. Namely, I want to add another new field to our output here that shows us the difference between the current month sales and the previous month sales. Now the great news here is I can borrow this entire expression we used to fetch previous month sales and use that as one of the inputs to this new expression. And this new expression is going to be just as simple as subtracting previous month sales, which again, we calculated via this expression from total sales. And I'll just alias this as sales month over month delta. And then of course I'll need to put a comma after that previous field. But let's not stop here. Let's take that delta or change in sales from previous month to current month and divide it by the sales from the previous month. That will get us the percent change in sales from the previous month to the current month a number that is guaranteed to be of interest to just about any decision maker in any business. So just like last time, we're going to copy and paste the expression from our last derived field and use that as the basis for our new expression. Except this time, we'll want to wrap this first piece in parentheses since we're going to be dividing it by another expression. That expression being the same one that we'll now have reused twice that calculates previous month sales. 
So now I'll go ahead and alias this as sales percent delta. And at this point, I think we're ready to run and test. So let's do that. And it looks like our sales month over month delta field is giving us exactly what we would expect. For example, we get a negative number here in our second row because the total sales for that particular month are almost $9,000 less than the previous month's sales. And while our sales percent delta does reflect that, the numbers in this column are pretty counterintuitive. So to make these percentages more digestible to a business rather than a technical audience, I'll take the additional step of multiplying this expression that calculates sales percent delta by 100. That way, instead of asking a non-technical business leader to interpret what negative 0.0188 means in terms of a percentage, our output will just say negative 1.88, which is a lot more intuitive whether you're a math maven or not. So just to be on the safe side here, I'll add an extra layer of parentheses around our expression so I can multiply the whole thing by 100. So now I'll add that multiplication and then rerun our query. And that I would say is much better. This is an output that I would be happy to copy and paste into an Excel spreadsheet and email out to an executive as a quick summary for how sales are changing month over month. And we're not just showing previous month sales and total sales side by side. We're also showing the difference between those two and the percent change, all in one compact view. Not half bad. All right, so that's a wrap on this week's video. I hope you enjoyed it or found it useful or hopefully both. In either case, I'm contractually obliged at this point to humbly beseech you to do the whole like and subscribe thing. Those likes and subscribes are great for my self-esteem and definitely make me want to create more videos like this. Okay, have a good one, y'all.